Hey, what's up, everybody? Rob Cohe. Welcome to part four, the uh, the end all of this uh, this awesome journey we've been on. All right, so right away, I'm going to show you something that will be your new best friend, which is called selection filters. Okay, so in this command in the fillet, I'm I want to select edges. Okay, so if you go up to the selection filter and enable edges, part edges. All of that other pre-highlighting of faces and, and, and all kinds of, it just goes away. And it only looks for edges. All right, super, super handy when you're doing something like fillets. Okay, so selection filters. Um, we're going to do it one more time, by the way, in this video. So if, if you didn't quite catch it, you know, and you can't figure out how to use the rewind. Um, <laughs> teasing here, people. We're having fun. Um, there's a... Um, Selection filters extremely useful um, when you're in the middle of a command and, and you're specifically looking for faces, edges, bodies. Um, you, you'll see a, another great use for this here uh, later on in this video. Okay, so next thing I want to do is I'm going to... Um, there's many different ways I could have done this, but I wanted to specifically again show that project intersect and how useful this is. So I'm projecting the intersects. I'm, I, I've got a sketch plane going right through the middle of the part. Um, and I'm going to intersect. I'm going to create sketch geometry that represents the intersection of where my sketch plane is intersecting with, um, with the part. Because what I want to do is I want to offset six millimeters, um, basically representing the, um, the thickness of that material um, on the inside. And I'm going to uh, create a sketch profile here that's going to represent um, what we're going to use to revolve around. Okay, again, a hundred different ways I could have done this, but this is, I wanted to show the offset. I wanted to show, you know, using extend and trim, um, you know, really handy, useful tools here um, for me to get the geometry I'm looking for. And again, you know, that hatch sometimes is disturbing. So I'm just going to turn off the visibility of the, um, uh, of the, of the body so that I can just hone in on my sketch, all right? So I've got the offset geometry that I'm looking for, and then now I'm just gonna you know, manually create uh, a few lines here from center uh, down to the midpoint, up to there, and then you know, just for the sake of getting rid of unwanted, unneeded geometry, uh, I'll just get rid of that. Because I'm gonna revolve this around, use a cut feature to get um, the geometry that I'm looking for. Uh, so, <clears throat> Since I deleted a lot of the other reference geometry, um, some of its um, constraints went away. The, the distance of the offset went away, um, which is why I'm, I'm being forced to place these dimensions here. And I misclicked, of course, uh, so why not? Um, just go ahead and get rid of that, place it correctly. There's my six millimeter. Now they could all be independent, or I could, of course, reference them to one. Um, the other and then one of these things I'll create a, uh, a video here uh, coming up where we'll do a little bit tighter parameter management with the parameter dialogue and referencing parameter names and those types of things uh, I'll do another one of those uh, here soon but um, in the interest of time uh, let's go ahead and use the revolve uh, that profile um, around itself with a cut operation to remove the material from the backside of the part here Okay, um, go ahead and grab a, a big old fillet. I think if there's a bearing that would go in here, I would probably bring in as reference to get the actual um, dimensions and you know what size fillets I would need. Uh, obviously, we're not assembly modeling here. We're doing some part detailing. Um, so bear with me on making some assumptions as to what those actual dimensions would be. Okay, so... Now I'm going to go ahead and use the whole command. Now, one of the cool things about the whole command that I don't show off enough is finding uh, the placement, especially on uh, the center of a circle or a center of a round um, without the need to have a sketch is handy. There, I just hit H, select the surface that I wanted to place the hole on, and um, it's able to find the center of that circle. Um, kind of cool, fast way to, to place a hole. All right, we're almost done. You guys have spent so much time with me. I mean, we're really becoming family here. Uh, I'm very much enjoying this. 
<laughs> so the next thing I want to do is do those uh, relief cuts out of the middle, um, light, uh, lighten up this part a little bit. And this is assuming I have unlimited machining time and I want to <laughs> endure the expense of doing something that looks cool on a on a part and machinists are watching this going what is this guy doing this doesn't add any value whatsoever and it's gonna make the part crazy expensive I know um, I'm doing it because I can <laughs> so let's go ahead and offset all of those projected faces um, the same distance here and for the sake this is really click intensive you can see I'm just offsetting each of those um, the same distance um, and there we go and so I'm gonna speed up the speed up the video here a little bit so we can get to the next step here and the next step is going to be um, just adding some rounds to each of those sharp edges so I'll grab a hey let's just let's just six millimeter why not um, all the way around now some of the times you, you'll you'll take out actually more than two or more than one sharp edge and you can just pick the two here so you can see I just I skipped over the edge and went right to the next one um, I know that went by really fast but you know, it, it's just a fillet command, man. You can pick the point, or you can pick pick two uh, two lines, and it's going to place the uh, the appropriately diameter fillet for you. So there we go. All right, so now I've got all the geometry that I want. I'm going to go ahead and hit E for extrude after I finish the sketch. Grab all the profiles and just cut uh, about two millimeters of material away. Um, for no other reason than it looks cool. <laughs> now the next thing I'm going to show you is when I fillet these, rather than click all the edges, I just fillet the face. You can click the face and it'll grab the edges for you. Um, type in your distance and uh, your, your fillet radius rather, and we're good to go. Okay, so now if I compare this to the, the, the one that maybe got your attention um, enough to spend 40 minutes with me just blabbering about part modeling, um, I applied some materials to this so that I applied some some shiny material because who doesn't like shiny things and um, so I just went and found chrome black here and I'm you can see I'm taking that material and I'm putting it on to the faces notice in the upper right hand corner of the appearance dialog box I'm choosing the faces and not the body's components this is where the selection filter comes in handy again so if I go and deselect everything and just say look I only want you looking for body faces right now it makes the selection of the next series of, I don't know, 100 left clicks that I use to grab all of this geometry much easier. It's not looking for the body. It's not looking for part edges. It's only looking for, your cursor is only out looking for faces. Super, super handy because I'm pre-selecting and then I'll just drag, drop, and it puts that material on all of those pre-selected faces. And I'll go around and you know do the same thing to all these uh, relief cuts. You can see I'm kind of doing them one at a time. Um, I don't know, just I guess habit, because every now and again you'll 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 misclick, and then you have to get that selection set again, and it's not handy. So you know we'll, we'll look for ways to improve this. This is really click intensive, like some sort of paintbrush type of thing. I think would be cool, um, but uh, but nevertheless, it's 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 not that hard. So um, let me go ahead and place a few uh, fillets here at the end, uh, maybe a two millimeter fillet to round off uh, some of the remaining sharp edges that we have on this part. And uh, I, there we go. So if you've, one of the things you'll notice about the fillet command is if you've selected an edge and then you change the dimension, it's not looking, the cursor isn't looking for an edge anymore. What you have to do is hold down uh, the command or the control key, depending on you using Mac or Windows, and it'll begin to look for uh, edges again. Because uh, Fusion thinks that once you typed in a distance, you've, you're done with your selection set. To add or remove to the selection set, you just hold down the command or the control key, depending on if you're in Mac or Windows, and you're good to go. So there we go. Look at this beautiful monstrosity of a fairly complex part. 38 different features, something like that. Um, hopefully you learned a few things along the way. I certainly did. Uh, it, was a, it was a cool part to kind of test a lot of the, you know, ways to, to mentally break down, like, how, how, you know, how do we do this thing? Um, so, oh, I forgot a face there, apparently. But yeah, man, good time, good time. So, 
A couple other things. One last note before we go. Um, I love to. I I like to change the home view to something better than what it gives you by default. So get it to where you want. Right click on the home. Set current view as home. Notice you can change the view to front, uh, which one's the top, etc. So hey, there we go. Um, feeling very accomplished on this fine morning. Um, you know, let's go ahead and save this bad boy because if you're not first, you're last. See you next time.